Good. How are you? Good. How are you? attracted you to the uh, script and the role? I actually did not read the script before I auditioned. Um, it was kind of an audition like any other. My, my agent sent it out to me. And of course, like I watched the video growing up. as was like every day on Cartoon Network. So I was like, no way they're making another like, Scooby-Doo movie right now. Of course I'm going out for this. And so automatically I was just attracted to it because of the fact that it was Scooby-Doo. Like, I kind of cared what the script was at that point. And then the role of Velma is, I actually originally went out for Daphne. They called me in for Daphne. I was like, no. Uh, excuse me, like I'm not Daphne. So it's kind of a little rebellion act. I wore my glasses into the audition. I wore glasses. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like my contacts ran out. I just need my glasses. And then I read once for Daphne, and immediately Jennifer, our producer who was in the room, was like, um, um, can you go out and just read Velma's sides and come back in and do that? And I was like, um, yeah, no problem. And here we are. Um, what was, um, what? What did it feel like to just work on a girl project and having a female producer? It was amazing. I mean, it, it goes so much more than that, too. That we have a female director, female producers, a female writer, and a male writer, but a female writer as well. We had a female cinematographer, we had female props, I mean, like, a female editor. It was, it's just it's crazy how pervasive, like, females are in this project, and you don't really see that a lot in the industry. Um, I go to film school at USC, and so even in my class, there's, you kind of see a disparity of females against everyone else. So it's really cool getting into this industry and working on a professional project and knowing, like, not to be blunt, but, like, there's hope for us out there. Like, this, there are projects that are making it possible for women to show what they got. And it didn't change. The project's amazing. It's not like it's less than worse. It's just, it's still an amazing project. I'm so proud of it. How do you relate to Velma personally? Um, I I think Velma, she's always been my favorite character, but I just, I love like the sassy, like the sassy, sarcastic side of her. It's not, it's more, I, I made it a little bit more noticeable in my rendition of her, but even in the original cartoon where like there's a, there's a clip I remember of like a monster like coming up to scare them and she goes, you stop that. And that's just like my favorite like idea of Velma where she's just like, doesn't have time for that. She knows it's not monsters to go, she knows the person behind it, so she's not at all phased by the fact that, in my mind, she always like runs along with them when they're getting chased just for the, the fun of it, even though she knows it's like not a real threat. Being a fan of, of uh, the Scooby-Doo and especially Daphne or uh, Velma, how did it feel once you actually saw yourself in that role? Oh, I think it kind of became real when like I put on the orange sweater and saw that for the first time. Also, when they cut my hair because I used to have hair down here, like down to my waist, so they cut it when I got to the hotel. And so like that was the first time I was like, oh, okay, maybe I actually could like look like Velma a little bit. And then they put on the orange sweater, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then like seeing myself act, I'm very critical of myself, so I don't like it. <laughs> but I hope that other people do. <laughs> but um, I, I like to think it's a good Velma. Like it was weird. It's weird thinking that like I'm kind of a little bit of her now. She's a little bit of me. If that makes sense. No, absolutely. Thank you. Velma has a very strong STEM background. Yes. A, do you have a very <laughs> STEM, and B, how do you think Velma inspires little girls and viewers to get in and to participate in STEM? Yeah, so, I'm not very good at math and science. I'm more of an English history kind of gal, unfortunately. I, I love math and science. I love how there's a right and wrong answer in most cases. And so on and so forth. But uh, you know, I almost fit in, like failed physics in high school. Like it's it's just really not my like, area of expertise. But um, I think that um, it's really really important for young girls to see that girls can be good at STEM areas because I mean there have been a lot of like studies show that show that like girls are just as good in these fields, but they're less pervasive in these fields like professionally because they don't think they can or they don't think they're expected to or they don't think they fit into the role or the, the, the stereotype of it and even in like studies that have done in colleges where it's like and I don't know if I can use this in the interview because I'm just talking about random studies that we're going to be reading. Okay, cool. <laughs> there are studies that like the, the show that like, sorry, I didn't like a lot, that show 
they asked girls and guys, like, who do you think gets better grades? And all the guys answered, oh, guys are doing better in this class academically. And all the girls were like, guys are doing better in this class academically. And then in reality, they looked at the grades and the majority of girls were getting higher grades than the guys. And it's just, it, like, girls need to know that it is okay to love science and math and engineering and, and that they can just be just as good. Why not? Why not better? And they, I don't think there are a lot of examples of that, especially in pop culture and media right now. <laughs> You talked about uh, how you enjoy the character film. Personally, what uh, were you able to bring to the character? Were you able to inform it, or is it very much play what you wrote kind of thing? I think just by myself, I was able to bring a lot more of the sarcasm and dry wit and humor to her. Um, Susie Unessi, our director, was really amazing about letting me do improv on set. Um, and so a lot of some of the jokes in there are just things that like I thought no one could say in the moment and that ended up making it to the movie. And then I think a lot of it that Susie helped bring with me, um, that Susie and I talked about, is that this Velma has an edge. She has, she's a little bit more of an outsider that doesn't really fit in. And uh, that's definitely not the Velma you see back in the day in the cartoon. 